Welcome back everybody to game three of Orange versus Team DK. We are now going to find out who advances onto the next round of the playoffs. Where refueled? You've had some eggs. Something. Big shout out to Curtis, AUI2000, who is our personal cook for the week. That's why we actually hired him. Yeah. Product cooking and nothing else. Yeah. But Pro let's actually go into... Professional <laughs> analysis. We're not getting the game, Lumi. We're going to... Uh, Praise Kurt's cooking some more. Yeah, okay. I mean, he's actually <laughs> no, no, no. helped us make some fried rice, yeah. which is really good. Ben would cook, cook a mean salmon. Like, yeah. it was it was legit. But, he all right, let's <laughs> No, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> go let's back to game three of Orange versus DK. Loser yeah. goes home, winner moves on to face LGD Gaming. Yeah, absolutely. DK are going to be playing over on that Radiant side once again, like they were in game one. They've got the first pick this time around. Immediate ban onto a, a Hyos Mag, although last game, Mag. Didn't work out too well for Orange. I almost feel like this is a hero worth laying through the pool. I feel like he, we, we've been seeing how Clockwork in some ways is just as dangerous, if not more dangerous than a mag. Yeah, they also had a lot of trouble. The Blink Dagger came out really early, and they were able to trade favorably when they land some big RPs. If not the mech that came so far for ROTK, they would have lost all those fights. So, in this own right, Magnus is still a very powerful hero, but you're right, I agree with you. I think I think Clockwork counters him pretty hard. Ten I'm wondering if we're going to see Lifestilla finally slip through the pool once. It's I happened can't. one game the entire Five tournament, which was a calculated remain. decision from Alliance. I, I can't. I, I, if Orange throws away Lifestealer right now... And like the biggest game Orange of the tournament for them. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it, you get, there'll be bigger games if they win this and go on to burst LGD. But at this point, this is the biggest game so far for them in the tournament. I mean, They can get Lone Druid in return, but I don't know if that's worth it. I mean, if you show that you could give away Lifestealer and you have a prepared strategy to beat Lifestealer, that's a pretty big deal in zone, right? But I'm not sure whether you could take that risk. Lifestealer, for those of you guys that don't watch professional Dota too much, he's one of the hardest hero to kill early on. He doesn't need too much gold to actually give you damage. He's Ten. very fast, he's very mobile. And he's also banned. He's also banned. So let's DK's not talk anything about him because I don't I don't expect we'll see him uh, very much. It's one of those things when you get this late in the tournament though, because DK have not used him for a single game. If you leave him in the pool, it's suddenly it's like, well, DK get him, but they haven't had a single game of practice with him. At least not since well, their previous scrims. I'm pretty sure they had enough practice with him with every yeah. other time they play Lysa. I, I think it's a risk you could maybe take at some point later on in the tournament. If we're going to see Shadow Demon actually oh, banned in the last two games and get mm -hmm. first picked, then this hero is, as far as supports go, kind of OP. I, w I, I don't think he's like a, a, a hero that needs nerfing necessarily. It's just that he does so much more than any other support hero in the game. Yeah, we kind of talk, made a joke about Visage returning as a top tier. This is the king of supports. Yeah. You know, some some might disagree in terms of who you ask. Wisps is definitely up there. Wisps is in the game. I don't think there's a better support hero in the game than Shadow Demon. Ooh, the most yeah. well-rounded support hero. Fantastic Ten early game, mid-game, late game. He's got it all. He's got... He doesn't have a stun. That's the only He's kind of to save. Well, disruption can... Remaining. Like, I mean, it, it's a... Uh, if you want to disrupt a spell, you can. Sure, definitely. Uh, it's a setup, and as well, it's a setup. It does absolutely everything, this hero. Um, you can scout using Shadow Poison. You can do damage over time. You can purge through BKB. Stack camps, yeah. farm camps. Yeah. He just does, does right. a ton. So we'll see how DK moves on here with their pickup. Gyrocopter and Nyx Assassin is going to be the first and second pick for Orange Esport. And we see Mushi play a ton of times. And I'm going to say I'm not a big fan of Mushi's Gyrocopter. Yeah. But with that said, I think Gyrocopter complements Orange lineup generally very well because they're a team that can play early. Gyrocopter ga gives you the early game power. They play mid, Gyrocopter gives you that. If it extends Five late, Gyro remain. also gives you that. So it's just a very versatile carry in that own right. Yeah, his Gyrocopter hasn't stood out too much for me, but I do like the hero in Orange. But this is very similar back to their game one draft. They have the Gyrocopter, Nyx Assassin, this sort of global type line. Do they even go back for the Nature's Profit? Do they third pick the Clock? Oh, sorry, oh, clock Clockwork band up. Man, yeah. I just so. notice that. Okay. So no Clockwork this time around. The two big solo mid game controlling heroes both banned out. That means we're sort of looking more towards heroes like Beastmaster, maybe even going for those sort of uh, more mobile solo mids. Your Puck, your Queen of Pain getting picked up as solo mids. Templar Assassin, another possible, a very orange hero. Mushi as well as Ahaya both play fantastic TAs. The one other hero, just quickly bring up, you mentioned this a lot, is Tinker. Yeah. Do Orange even go for that? We haven't even seen Tinker for a longest time, but now we see oh. Kunga and Anti-Mage. And seeing this kind of dual core yeah. combo, you can't go for Tinker anymore. This Jill. is this is like classic DK. It when really in doubt, is, right? When in doubt, Anti-Mage. And, and, you know, you have the SC Kunga combo in the mid game. They don't even need the Disrupt to land the stun. Yeah. Uh, Torn is uh, magical in its own right. Anti-Mage will be killing magical dealing stuff by himself because he's the anti-mage. Like DK Moto is just like stay calm and anti-mage. Yep. Game three. Ten seconds yeah. We've got this. Remaining. Game three and game one of next game against <laughs> LGD because when you get Kunkka <gasps> and anti-mage, I, I think Orange need to... Every series LGD DK is just anti-mage, lone draw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These super carries. But we aren't there yet. We have Orange who are... I mean, we've seen them go 50-50 with DK two games in a row. They put up great showings. They took one of them. They lost the second, but... 
Yeah, they are. One more pick going their way. Where do you think they need to sort of start looking for... Do, if they want a Nature's Prophet, I feel like they almost needed to get it early in now. I don't think Nature's Prophet is going to be the big deal here. Not against uh, X marks the spot. As well as a carry that could jump yes. right on top of you and suddenly you're... I mean, he's a range hero, but at the same time, when when somebody collapses on him, he's so squishy that he gets killed easily, especially if there's some dust for that. Not good against Shadow Anti-Mage particularly. Yeah, so I'm not sure whether you go Nature's Prophet here. I don't think DK needs to waste quote unquote a ban on this well um i'm actually somewhat surprised or somewhat creative i think they go chen I, i'd go chen they they play so well with it extinct is in my opinion best chen outside sure. of, one of the best chens outside of china like up there with aki maybe uh-huh and it's just well I, I don't even think china has that many good chen players so i don't know why i'm saying outside of china here but um i it's he plays it so well and it fits orange's style we saw it in game one work out so successfully I think Chen is somewhat weak against Shadow Demon because your your stuns are so limited with that support hero, especially against Anti Mage, right? Some of the most reliable stun is a Dark Troll Warlord, and you could easily disrupt that and be like, well, there goes your initiation. DK's they grab the Lone Druid though. This is, I like it because it's Orange have run it, actually one of their earlier games. They ran it in the solo mid. Mm -hmm. The KYX was playing at solo mid. They can put it off lane as well. Um, Mushi generally plays the Gyrocopter as sort of a, I say one position. He was in the off lane earlier on, but this time around. We'll see. I think Orange have shown a lot of versatility with a lone Druin pick, as well as the Gyrocopter, sometimes safe lane, sometimes off lane, that DK aren't, are going to still be guessing about what these lanes actually are. Yeah, to me, Orange plays good enough kind of for Protect 1 Dota. I, I, it's hard to call it for Protect 1 Dota, but the two, first two games so far, it's Ten just Mushi doing his, doing his own thing, and then the rest of the team doing their thing. And when you have lone Druid that's Five freely able to kind of push towers, he really helps the rest of your team snowball. Like, if you oh, can win fights so without your Lone Druid, the Lone Druid on the other side of the map is taking towers. And that allows down. you to snowball so fast, it's even more dangerous than the first snowball they had in, in first game. Yeah. So, it really depends on what the last two pick for Orange is. But they're if you not, could they're win not the, getting a Chen. They're not getting a big one. And I think that was DK's Orange with their third pick. They knew if they pick Chen, Lone Druid gets banned out. If they pick Lone Druid, Chen's getting banned out. They had to decide which they grab, and I think the Lone Druid is more crucial for their strategy. Yeah, especially against Shadow Demon and Angie Mage. Some yeah. of the kind of harder to get kill, uh, kills against. So I'm not sure where Orange goes here. If they could go like, I don't know, insert. Lesh I think Leshrac's good here. because sure. I think it's slightly better than the leaner option as far as the fourth position support. You can have some pushing power and just, I guess, a Lesh more versatile support here. Leshrac's really weak against Kunkka Boat though, because he's very squishy. So Boat really kills you at level any, one. Any f five position support is squishy against Kunkka. All right, that's, so maybe <laughs> that's not a really important CM, point. Look at CM, you look at Lina. I think that's, True. you don't consider that. That's not an important point to point out. The more important point is that you're all five AOE damage maybe. and all burst damage. Coco yeah. Rum eats you alive. Yeah. Especially yeah. against anti mage spell shield. If they're using it just for tower pushing, I, I, I think that's a good idea. But die. if you expect him to do some make him team fight damage output wise, I'm not sure how much he's gonna give you. Yeah. Fine. So you, they're not gonna be. End of the day, they're not looking for their five position support to be there. They hear that. Sure. They're fight. they're gonna say Gyrocopter, you do the heavy lifting. Lone Druid, you do the heavy lifting. I'm just concerned for Orange Esport, like the 10 minute the skirmish, the t 12 minute team fight. How they're gonna deal with the Kunga? Because so far there's an anti mage. So I think if anything, Orange will have a numbers advantage because anti sure, doesn't want to come true. to those team. Well, fights. same thing for Lone Druid. Is he gonna come to the team fight? I think if if he gets a fast armlet, he can. Uh, maybe they even base the, because the thing is orange they can base their team fights will be based around pushing seconds, towers remember. they'll have lone druid pushing a lane maybe they group up with lone druid i saw i've seen a lot of teams they'll Five go for a lone druid remaining. dk have done this himself he'll be safe lane but around 10 minutes in he'll rotate mid because he's got the t1 top tower he wants the t1 mid lone druid's really good at that early push so i think you can actually base a team fight around lone druid coming and to mage he's not going to leave his farm yeah in fact in the orange east where bans out the nature of profit they they don't they don't want somebody that could deal with the team fight and still defend the tower. And that's what DK really excels in, right? We see them TPing into those towers. Also, don't really expect this, or don't kind of bet your money on Kunkka going solo mid because there's always no. a possibility of a yeah. tri lane that Kunkka. We've, we've seen Yao, I think, yeah, yeah. played it uh, for LGD like that. So I think almost this is one of those games. Well, it's only if you think Antimate is going to get a good 1v1 matchup, which right, right now he's not. If, well, right now we don't know who the offlane is for Orange, but if it's Lone Druid, you don't want Antimate 1v1. I don't think Gyro. I don't think anti mage beat gyro either, right? Well, you're not gonna have a suicide gyro. Well, we kind of did last game, but it wasn't Why? meant to be a suicide gyro. she has been playing remaining. suicide gyro all day long, right? So I don't know. He's been offensive trial and gyro. And then the supports that. leave him to yeah. join the top. So yeah. uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it actually ends up to be. Yeah. But in any case, I don't think anti mage wins that solo lane. So it really forces. Ooh, I like the visage ban. Yeah, it, it really is an important one. I forgot about this here, and I definitely. I think that was almost one of the more likely picks for orange. There's still yeah the Leshrac, Lena, Keeper of the Light, probably one of the other sort of more unique supports that's still possible for Orange. 
It gives them some global kind of. It gives them a ton yeah. of damage as well, but the shack, no one really benefits a lot from the chakra. Jaro and Lone Druid just no big. Yeah, I, I don't. Some, I don't see it. Get some Keeper of the Light Storm Spirit last two picks. Hey, that's pretty spicy. <laughs> Orange don't like team. Orange aren't a big Storm Spirit team, um, but I, we'll see. I, I think Beastmaster is a solo mid hero for Orange if they want to go for this strong mid game push. Is going to be where they look. They haven't got any other Ten sort of solo mid that remaining. can just be tanky. Control the flow of the game. Be that setup spell. Beastmaster will fit really remaining. nicely. I feel. I think Queen of Pain might be a pretty decent pickup as well. It allows you to kind of play, kind of four hero that do Ten. something, and your lone druid that does his own thing. And when you get a quick enough DK's orchid, you could actually DK. shut down Kunkka and Anti Mage really, really hard. Yeah. Generally, when a team fight happens, Kunkka, you know, he he runs at you. He thinks he's gonna drop his spells. You you orchid him. Suddenly he's confused. He's like, okay, well now I'm in big trouble. I I rely on Coco Rum to survive. Now he won't. I get think that. it's. He throws his spells, then he runs at you. Sure. Well, it depends on how the team fight actually yeah. begins, or if the Kunkka gets jumped on, or if Kunkka is actually applying the X marks to spot to jump on you. On that note, maybe Queen of Pain isn't a good Ten pick because you get X and you remaining. die. Yeah. I, I, Queen of Pain, not. I, you have that small sort of five minute five window where you have Orchid and Anti Mage doesn't have Manta, where you're good against Anti Mage, but once Anti Mage is Manta, it's not a good hero to be be facing Anti Mage. Yeah, actually, Orchid. You know what? I'm just dumb. Orchid's not going to do anything because yeah. if he gets Orchid, he gets disrupted and he's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I take it, take it all okay. back about the quap. Yeah, I'm just not sure what the orange could, should pick in here. And can you just not eat in front of us, Curtis? Because we're all hungry, and you're like Lumi, eating. Stay focus. Stay focus. I can. Okay. He's just eating a burrito. You can, Lumi. You can, and you will. All right. They Otherwise, got. I'll start beating you up here on stream. <laughs> they got. A wow. This Asian oppression here on BTS. That's why you guys heard it here on. I'm as Asian fanboy as they come, Lumi. But I've been praising the Chinese teams all. All weekend long, as they lose game after game to Alliance, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> no Asian oppression here. <laughs> judging from those drafts so far, you think DK, I mean, you talked about the Shrek for Orange Esport. Now DK's got it from their side. They, some, they, they got some really early game defense because you could go into the Lightning build. Five you have some good early game remaining. offense disrupting to split off the great ganks. So, I feel like this is as Winrunner DK of a lineup as service. you possibly get. And we're going to see the same win oh, runner. Don't, not, not another trial in win runner. <laughs> I don't think it will be, but. More likely, we see Gyrocopter Trilane and Windrunner in like a safe lane solo or even solo mid. Solo, solo mid, mid, yeah. I feel like the only lane I like Windrunner in in the current metagame is solo mid. I, I don't like Windrunner sort of as I a really suicide like solo. I really like her as a support too. Yeah, support. So yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree there. It's like that, that dual lane support or even yeah. a tri lane support, defensive support. But I don't like seeing Windrunner as an off lane solo or even a, side, a safe lane solo. I mean... I'm expecting a Kunkka on the mid lane here from Five the Chinese. How do you think the lane matchup, if it's going to be Kunkka versus Windrunner? I don't think it's a clear victory for Windrunner. I almost want to give it to to Kunkka. Because he just harasses so well. He denies so well. It's, you get regen though. That's the thing. I, I don't think you can... I think at, at best you break even on farm. I don't think I don't think it's a lane which you say one hero wins. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's fairly even. But again, we don't even know whether it's going to be a mid 1v1 yeah. matchup. We'll see. Uh, DK definitely have a ton of heroes in, in the hero pool. Do you even look towards, I mean, DK, if they want to pick up another semi carry of sorts, they could go for something like a Templar remaining. Assassin at the mid lane. They could go for a Queen of Pain. Beastmaster, Beastmaster though. I was talking about Orange picking up a Beastmaster. Well, Orange DK can do it just as well. And that puts us into a tri lane Kunker. The ROTK Kunker. Let's see it. I'm not sure, though. Do you just stick your two support in AM, say, you get the free farm here, we do our pulls, and then you put Beastmaster top and Kunker mid? No. No? You want to give a reason why? Just, just no. Be like, no. I'm good. All right. Gut feeling of gods. We'll see whether he is going to be correct or not. Last pickup coming up from Ten Orange. It really remain. depends on how they place this Windrunner. If they place this Windrunner as a support, then they need another like Five solo mid. They can put Jaro solo mid as well. All of these heroes, like every one of Orange Lina. hero, can solo mid. They're going to pick up an Orange. So Nyx Assassin and and Lena is going to be the support here. Windrunner either off lane or solo mid. It's going to be Ohio Windrunner mid. I like this already. Yeah, a higher win runner mid, we will see. Well, most likely. I, we could always see the offlane win runner with a lone druid mid, but I would sure. be very disappointed if that's the case. Actually, they always play the lone druid su suicide, right? With KYXY? No, they've done they, one of the games yesterday or the day before, they did solo mid lone druid. Okay. Um, I think they've also done safe lane where they do offensive trance. They actually, I mean, they, it's, al it's almost always KYXY who plays it, but he'll play it in many different lanes. Okay. Well, ROTK picks up the Beastmaster. There goes my prediction, maybe. I think more likely than offlane. I like the part where he said no. 
I like the part where I said no as well. Yeah. Now, I mo maybe he goes straight jungle, because you can see you pull the mid-camp using axes if you cut down the trees, so... Ten seconds. Yeah, I'm actually we'll very curious of what build he's going to go for I as know well. someone was telling me that Alliance, when they were, during their practicing, they, were, they, did, they did this matchup between Beastmaster and Lone Druid. Like time, it was Kurt who was telling us. They did this Beastmaster versus Lone Druid matchup time and time again to see if Prepare Beastmaster can actually beat Lone Druid. Actually, it was Will. Will was telling us. But whether or not Beastmaster can actually beat Lone Druid, I'm skeptical. How, how does a Beastmaster beat a Lone Druid? It doesn't. No possible way. Well, that, that was what Alliance confirmed. Okay, so Alliance did this like heavy practice between Beastmaster and Lone Druid. Every single way, Lone Druid wins the lane. Okay, so hopefully... That and is it Lone Druid safe lane? Yes, it is. Well, it's going to be offensive trialing here. I'm not sure whether DK actually want to dodge. If they don't dodge, Anti-Mage is going to have some sort of, oh. kind of annoyance factor. Another winner on a tri lane? Is this, is this one actually going to work out, Lumi? Nope. <laughs> I'm gonna explain why. <laughs> I'm gonna pull gods here. <laughs> All right. No, I mean, actually, it, it's actually gonna be pretty good, considering the fact that the supports on the radiant side they're fairly low armor. That's where Winner really comes yeah. out ahead as a kind of a carry on the offensive trialing. You get to harass really well. The problem with the Winner trialing is that you don't really get good killing power. Like you can harass, yeah. but as long as they stay back and tango up, you don't really always get a kill. Sure, you have impale into LSA and a power shot. That's a ton of nukes, but generally, I don't think that's enough to kill a full HP hero. All right, well, we're going to introduce our two teams. It's game three, guys. The winner of this match moves on to versus LGD China in our second, third place match of the bubble race. But this is to decide who gets fourth place, who advances. We've got on the radiant side, Team DK from China burning, playing the anti-mage QQQ or 357 on Shadow Demon. MMY, the Lashrak, being played, well, MMY playing the Lashrak. We've got ROTK playing the Beastmaster. And then finally, it's Super on the Kunkka. Yeah, meanwhile, on the Orange E squad, Orange e squad, Orange Esports side. We have Alina playing the, or being handled by Extinct. We have Net handling that Nyx Assassin. On the, again, not, finally not offensive trialing anymore. Mushi playing solo mid, I believe. Yep. On, on the Gyrocopter. On the bot, it's going to be Windrunner being handled by Ohio on the Lolling List. Disruption has already gone off. Ooh. Not seeing the early pickup. Actually misses the follow up stun. MMY. Not quite in range for that one. Yeah, and then last but not least, KYXY playing a 1v1 matchup. That, again, he should. Completely dominate yes. on the one. Yes. He's gone for heavy regen and a stout shield, but Lundra brings his Baron now, and yeah, this is a very, very tough matchup, but we'll see how KYXY plays it, whether or not he's practiced it Never countless times like Alliance have years. or not. Uh, actually, I mean, it's okay, because Beastmaster, considering that he does have a very, very high level or uh, high armor, he has a stout shield, and keep in mind that as the bear harasses you, and especially he's got level 2 aura, your crew wave could harass a bear back quite a bit. So you still are going to lose a lane, yes. but it's 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 not that bad. Lone Druid should win the last hits. He also should just harass pretty heavily. He needs to get that orb of venom up as fast as possible. I feel like we can see here he's going very heavy harass. Getting denies off at the same time. Doing a great job just trying to zone Beastmaster out. But Beastmaster, I think the key thing is here. I talked about last lane, last game how Darks here gets owned by an anti-mage 1v1, but hey, do some bottle crow and get a fast bottle and then use the crew to bottle crow. Super will have to just focus on getting runes and maybe you can do a lot better. I can immediately hear a ton of harass going back and forth. I have to look at this deny coming out from Super. He's just saving that Tidebringer yeah. and that's gonna give him plus like 18, 20 damage and I don't think Mushi could keep up in terms of CS. 4-2 versus 9 and 6. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Big mismatch, man. They're on bottom lane. Both both teams support. Well, one one for Orange, two for DK. We're looking to scout the two-minute rune. It's going to spawn top, which probably means we see Mushi head up and get it. He has got that bottle there. He's pushed out the creep wave, so good timing for him. He's got himself a haste ring. Yeah, back in the bot jungle, we see this kind of double Don't warding more fingers. and more. It seems like an overcommitment until you realize that, hey, they're going to at least spend one century to D-Warrior Observer, which I'm not sure whether they will find. QQQ right on top of that. Thank it you. is so important to actually get this uh, D-Warded yeah. because... Like, the DK supports, they can't really gank mid because they'll be very obvious, and Anti-Mage can't farm without his two supports there. And secondly, if they just sit there and do nothing, they're going to be falling really far behind in terms of EXP. Well, they are going to have that pull open for them in just a second. Actually, there's also a Sentry Ward here. Yeah. It's going to, are they both going to block that? They, yes, they do. The, the second one does wow. block the spawn camp. So they, yeah, they, this is what I mean by double oh, blocking the camp. I thought, I thought you were camp. talking about the, uh, the Observer Ward, the double Observer Ward here at bottom. Okay, I see what you mean now. Yeah, it double blocks it, okay. and now it, it just, it's a big guessing game for the, for the DK support. Now they drop the second Sentry here. That, that camp is done. Yeah. Well, the Sentry Wards don't last as long as the Observer Wards. That's the key thing here. So it will respawn around maybe the four or five minute minute min mark. But that's going to be damage has already been no done. Pull. Yeah, in terms of supports not getting XP. So Support, MMY is going to rotate around seeing no pull. Yep. And he's going to be feeling sad. Yep. I mean, in terms of... And this, to me, this is the most important lane right now for DK They're and so Orange. They're so confused. 
They're pinging. They're pinging to the left. They're gonna. Scout. They kind of know, but they don't. They can't do anything about yeah. it. So it's yeah. like, well, I mean, your mid lane is winning very heavily for DK because he's farming better there. In yeah. fact, actually, Mushi's catching pretty decently back up in terms of CS now. But your top lane is losing quite badly on R2 today, expectedly. I, so. I love Kunkka just using torrents to make Mushi the miss last hits. It's absolutely hilarious. That is so next level. It's, it's pretty next level. Yeah. He, he's got the bottle crow happening, so he's got plenty of mana to use it for. So even if it's just one torrent to make Mushi miss one last hit, well, hey, mana's expendable. Yeah, why, why the hell not? He needs to bottle up anyways. Kunga's gonna get himself a boot to speed. Uh, actually, we haven't talked about it too much. Does Kunga always go phase boots? I don't think you have to. X torrent actually can come out on Mushi the mid lane. There's no follow up. So once again, Super just throwing mana around. But I think phase drum is a solid build. I don't think you have to go phase boots, but I don't think you benefit enough from treads first to go for treads. Blood. Oh wow, first blood's actually a top lane. Lone Druid. There we go. They, that's why you don't send Beastmaster off lane. Well, the CS is one-sided and the first blood happens as well. Uh, it Must have been some some mm -hmm. Admiral Bulldog route like Mimos smoking mid -lane. towards mid. X, no torrents just yet. Spurf is gonna hit. No! Oh, oh my goodness, MOI missing a big one. They don't get a kill because of that. In fact, QQQ is gonna be still chasing for a couple more right clicks. Oh, no shadow poison either. A rare miss that was coming out from QQQ. Very weird and poor. I think it was Xing to make sure Mushi didn't run out of range of a disruption, but they could have gone for a disrupt torrent. Even if they don't have a torrent, just disrupt Leshrex on it. It's a kill. Well, now Mushi finds himself a regen rune and uh, Super has to walk all the way back. Look at these supports. They're blowing to block the five minute pull again. The sentry would expired, but they're just going to body block this. This is some next level. Now Orange. we're getting this, into DK's head. It's like, this is do they have another war? <laughs> this is why like Orange's supports never get any farm, but at the same time, it's 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 such good early game play. It really is. But I'm oh looks like we're gonna see a disruption. Spurf will land this time here. But they gotta back off QQ, you gotta be very careful. He gets shackled, he's dead. The big thing is for me is like Burning, if you look at him, he's got salve left, he's got ring of health, he is gonna find his farm. He's facing a ton of harass, but eventually the supports on Orange will leave. And eventually, yeah. Windrunner like, can't play as aggressively as she is playing. Antimage actually having a bit more trouble lasting under his tower because of some Bassy Ring toggling actually happening from a higher That is so up. next level. Yeah, he missed a range creep under the tower, which normally you'd never see Burning miss, but because of the Bassy Ring, the tower hit didn't do enough damage. He hit it, and then the next tower hit got it. It was, it was crazy to see. You want top lane? Yeah, RTK's gonna oh get rooted as well. And look at KYXY body, body, block. body blocking what's here, get the beers. Oh my god, yeah, another yeah. couple more hits. So Axe is gonna fly out here and now RTK. Kunk again, though. Kunk is rotating, but there's no, you can't kill this guy with just the Kunk. 900 HP once he pops the ultimate form. Bottom lane, though. A lot of action went down. XTX XT gets brought down as lean, and meanwhile, there's a return kill going on left track. He gets brought down. Carapace is up. Ohio forced to pop the winner and get the hell out of there. Net. Gonna take a bit more damage. Mid lane. More mana break hits. Action all over. Yeah, Mushi finds himself a haste and he's just going in, in Super's face right now with Hold that rocket three barrage. seconds if he wants to. Uh, yeah, I mean. Take a little gamble. Oh, he's pushing the no. creep wave. Super is going to actually uh, bottle throw again. He's actually quite low. And then Torrent actually will hit Mushi this time. Here. Well, Mushi takes a tower hit as well. Looks like he's going to be okay. Super needs to be careful. Mushi, oh, he's going for it. Super didn't see. Super didn't see. He gets brought down by Mushi. What a play. Both not going to land. Mushi dodges it. That is why That is why, why you put Mushi in mid. He's, he's a playmaker. That's why, like, it doesn't matter how it comes down a draft, because sometimes Mushi just makes stuff happen. Yeah, I yeah. love. He throws the cooldown from Fog. Super just got completely outplayed there by Mushi, and well, that's that's a big pickup for Orange. They're at four kills to one now. Lone Druid winning that safe lane matchup convincingly. Beastmaster's ab he's abandoned the lane, but at the same time, it's because he's also just hit level six, so he realizes he can't lane against against Lone Druid. He can't kill him with a raw. He's better off ganking the safe lane or ganking mid. Yeah, I mean, if you look at every single lane, they just lost mid because Mushi got us that solo kill, and the first gank didn't really work out. They lost top handily. And I'm not sure whether they're actually winning bot. ntme has got 24 CS, yeah. we're 7 minutes in. All the pool blocking. This still hasn't spawned. <laughs> we're, why, like, we're 7 minutes in now. Maybe they did a pool that we didn't notice, but it looks to me like it just hasn't spawned. Yeah, it hasn't. I, I don't think it did spawn. So, I feel like DK is losing every single lane right now. And when you're playing this kind of slow and passive farming strat, it's not going to work out back in the middle here. Mushi, again, driving super back. X, Torn. Is that going to hand? It's Lestrek coming in. Can this stun finally hits one? I don't know if there's enough damage. So maybe with the boat, he runs forward. So the boat damage doesn't do anything. So cooldown is there. Not going to save its life. The roar even being used to make sure they get that kill. I mean, they got the kill. Very yeah. expensive kill indeed. But that that is going to be where they need to start 
when you have a Beastmaster, when you have such a low cooldown ultimate, using those expendable roars to just make sure you get up kills is good. It's very, very good. And uh, they're going to get themselves a regen rune ROTK as well. Offensive disruption right here. Are they going to try to go for the block? No block here. Oh, it looks like QQQ might be in a little bit of trouble. He's going to get surrounded from both sides, but it looks like the pincer will come here from burning. Where's the axe? It's a shackle shot with you here. Where is the three man impaled to follow through? Carapace. Net didn't drop it, and he's gonna use a spike carapace. But looks like he's one blink away from death, not even necessary. As Shadow Demon picks up the kill. Yeah, there was just DK outnumbering Orange there. The pincer from the anti mage coming in, and it did go downhill. But meanwhile, Lone Druid, T1 tower to himself. We're gonna have to see TP's coming in, or he's gonna get a very fast tier two as well. This is something that DK just don't have an answer for. Yeah, this is exactly what I meant when you say when Orange is, could win that 4v4 on the other attack. side of the map. And when you could have Long Drift solo push, the rest of your team is going to get so much gold because of it. And of course, he is going to get a ton of gold. As you can see, KYXY already got boots upgraded on both Hero and Bear, and he's looking for a quick arm. Yeah, I love how he just like denies that those two range creeps. ROTK axes, the, axes it down, range creeps on 5 HP, denies them both, and every little thing that Orange are doing right. Well, bot lane, let's see if Burning's going to be in a little bit of trouble. If he eats Impale, there's going to be a ton of chains then coming through. He's going to go for the patented Burning build, a ton of stats. Yeah. One point into each of his skills, and we'll be maxing straight, Blink next. Straight, straight Battle Fury. Doesn't go for the treads. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Burning is being somewhat shut down, I want to say, but he's still finding that 32 CS. Do you mm. think he's going to have a big impact in this game? And when do you think he's going to have this big impact? It's going to be a slightly slower Battle Fury than, of course, your free home anti -mate. He's up against a Trilane, but once he gets that, he's so efficient and so fast at farming jungle, finding the safest places on the map to get the fastest possible I farm that so. it's really hard to count him out. I love how Winner has the fast phase boots because this is making it so much easier to deny creeps against burning. If you go regular boots, ar the arcane boots build with sometimes Trilane Winner has to, mm -hmm. you don't have the damage to deny as many creeps in anti -mate. Part of the reason he's not farming all is because Mid lane. of his boot. We're gonna see a Torn into an Edict. Torn's gonna split, it's gonna follow through as well. No, Mushi oh, runs away. MMY is missing so many spells right now. The second cooldown's gonna come, but there's a Coco Rum applying a little bit of pressure. Split, is, or the Impale. What a crit coming out from Super! Lina just died before he lands the LSA. Now MMY lands the Splurf, and they're gonna get a second kill as a result. Was that a burning TP? He got stuff. He got really fast this fight. Looks like a TP. He would have loved to have gotten those kills on himself, but he does get gold. He was in that 1,000 XP range, oh, XP and gold range. So well, he he's lost gold. more gold though, because he's not farming. But he gets back very fast. He even he's even using this level one blink just to get to this lane as soon as possible. I'm not gonna fault burning for making that no. TP. I really love to see carry players TPing in. Not, not only to A your allies for a lot of ton of burst damage, but more importantly, try to get those KSs. But yeah, that was a very clownly gang. Lena dived to this uh, Tidebringer before he dropped her spells. MMY missing multiple. He needs to time it perfectly, because the way Mushi's doing every time, he's just running forward and then yep. it misses. Well, so. I mean, you should have missed your Splurf out of Disrupt. Yeah. That's that's if the you, big thing there. Yeah, you have to time, time it perfectly. He's just slightly misjudging it. And Denied. if Mushi runs backwards, he does hit it because of, I think, of the placement. But Mushi just... Yeah. Mushi too good. Mushi is too good. He's actually running forward to the boat as Ooh. well. That's why the boat's going from orange now. Well, I'm not sure whether they'll find anti mage because Burning's got some sixth sense. Oh, he's they're actually go just looking for tower more than anything. They've actually rotated KYX where they every time he goes for the T2 tower, that's where Beastmaster TPs push out the lane. So they decide let's go for a more guaranteed tower, which is going to be this tier one bottom end. No, they're going to be defending that tier oh, one push. There's a glyph available as well. Smoke. Yeah, it's going to be smoke and Beastmaster will be this is it. TPing to the tier one tower, and we'll see the boat and Torrent could be big. The bear is going to try to scout something out, but they're all smoked up and it will not detect it. Maybe too late. Here comes a TP from Beastmaster, though. We need to see a torrent soon. I don't. They can just position themselves further away, disrupting to lead things off. But the Carapace is already there from there. Great Carapace. Even better shackle shot. Super. Leshrac can't actually. Gal does get away there. Super the first to be brought down on the Kunker. Leshrac somehow survived. The boat gonna clip net. Does do some damage here, but it's Orange with a power shot to finish off Shadow Demon, who've won this fight. Leshrac, MMY. He TPs to safety, but Orange with a great team fight. The Carapace, I think was the, d the d difference maker there. He came out of the disruption, had the carapace on, stunned all of DK, and then the shackle shot from Ahaya was spot on. You cannot initiate like that against a Nyx Assassin, anybody but Nyx Assassin, because he just actually ravages your entire team if you try to actually clip him. Wow. 0.6 seconds done, but it's, it's enough. Well, okay, I ravage maybe a little bit too strong there, but yeah, he, he disrupts your combo, and suddenly the, the fight goes the other way. Also, throughout the big chaos, KYXY was able to get the last hit on the bottom tower, so it was just a ginormous victory for Orange. 
Orange Esport. We were doubting the win rate in that game, but it seems like this one working out very nicely when you, you could actually chain stun uh, and follow up your ally stuns. There's more early game clashes where we're seeing the high level winner come into play. Uh, squishy supports like Leshrac, Shadow Demon, even the Kunker Beastmaster for Leshrac sense can be brought down pretty fast with these power shots. And Orange immediately, they get the tier 1 bottom, they rotate mid for the tier 1 as well. Here comes two Net. What, two men impale is going to hit on and the call down. Dragon Slave right, LSA. Like two. Oh my god, Perfect. everybody just dying. And look at them, they're slowing down. M1 is going to try to walk out there. The Twin's going to hit everybody. The big cleave coming up super as well. One hit in Tango. Now Super's going to get caught as well. Lina Snowball. With a double kill. Yeah, Snowball is the name of game for Orange, and they were going to get another tower on top of that. I think Orange Esport is looking so good right now. Yeah, they're looking absolutely phenomenal. They'll get the T1 tower, three tower lead. They even TP top. They're going to prevent Burning from getting too much more farm here. He's even gone back to the treads, realizing he needs whatever he can to try and get some farm, some items up early game. But it's, not for the... it's, it's looking really difficult for, for DK to get back in this game because Orange, they've got Lone Druid. They can take Roshan in the next sort of couple of minutes if they really want. At least force a fight around the Roshan pit if DK wants contest it but DK let's look, take a look at the gold graph 7 8k gold behind yikes yeah it, it just comes down to all burning at this point here and this is where having a beast master is very important you can yeah. put that hawk up suddenly you limit the gang coming out from orange orange is going to be starting to pressure these tier 2 towers but it's going to be a lot more difficult I thought DK had a very good idea in terms of defending their tower having the beast master TP and having the four man smoke up if they had a glyph that would have worked perfectly, but they had to blow the glyph a lot earlier, and as a result, the silver damage output is just insane. And and as a result, they couldn't defend the tower. They lost a team yeah. fight. Questionable initiation here. I mean, Ehome X or now DKX as well as DK three five seven premier supports this game. I'm not seeing it because the decision to disrupt the Nyx Assassin, multiple misplurfs. I'm not impressed. It's I don't know nerves. I don't think Stage so. Stage fright? I don't think so. They're just mistiming stuff, I guess. They're human, I guess. Yeah. They are human. Even, even DK players. <laughs> even we see, even seen, We've even seen IG. I yeah. mean, they, they're human. They went. They bombed out of the group stage here. It's Alliance. The new the new Dota gods. Well, I'm going to praise, uh, I'm gonna praise uh, Winter a little bit here. The, the Chinese mentality is, generally, we're going to make sure that or, or four, you know, the, or, or three, two, four, two, three, four, five players play well. They're gonna take control of the early game, take control of the mid game, and just win the game without even needing to involve a one player. Or one player is gonna be the last resort, kind of. Yeah. Or, and and now it's in the, in DK burning we trust. Like yeah. it really is there on the backup plan. Something that you love to see. Cloak has been picked up on Lone Druid. Even with even with just the armlet on on his spirit bear, he's got another gloves of haste. So probably seeing something like a maelstrom in. And Orange's item advantage is just so big that it's like you say, it's all about the anti mage. They've got, they've got two solo heroes in Kunker and Beastmaster who can do a lot just with levels without a lot of farm. They're tanky, hard to kill. Beastmaster provides the inner beast aura as well as a lot of lockdown, and Kunker can provide a lot of lockdown and team fight ability as well. Yeah, to me is how quickly will Orange actually take down these tier two towers? Like you said, these radiant heroes once they hit level eleven, that's pretty much all they need. So you gotta pressure so much that they are defending towers and not really kind of contesting your own towers. Yeah. And you're slowly farming your jungle, you're kind of chipping in in the enemy jungle, threatening to go for the Roche on. They know that anti mage just TP top. Yeah. Can you go the Roche right now, well, especially when you have a double damage? They're pinging the Hawk. They saw the Hawk go up there, and they, they know they're being spotted by this. So they're just farming out some entity. At the same time, they know they're being spotted. They'll see anti mage top and say, well, sure, they know we're roasting, but are they going to stop us? And if they do try to top up, isn't that, isn't that the fight that we're going to win? Well, I mean... It's very dicey if you get a 5-man bow or 4-man bow. There's a ton of AoE damage, especially if there's a soul catcher. Seems like DK is going to give yeah. it up, though. You position Lina and Nyx Assassin in wisely outside of the pit. Nyx Assassin just scouting across river. He'll see Kanka and he'll just sort of smile across the river. Can a Nyx Assassin smile? Yes. Once You're again, so I'm sure. Not explain, You're not going to explain to them, no. Yes. Okay. Easy road jam. No, no contest from DK. They quickly realize the only way they're going to contest that is if Orange are completely out of position. If they have five heroes in the Roshan pit, Roshan, but that's any team at this level is not going to be doing that. Yep, and they also defend the tier one up top, tower up top with Net teeping in. Yeah, we talked about big. we talking about Net being poor. He's got himself our game boots. Yeah, that's the thing here. One tower for anti mage, and suddenly his battle fury go, comes up two minutes faster. And at this point. Any time that burning can cut off from cut, like sort of trim down to get this battle figure up, it makes a huge, huge different long term. Yeah, more importantly, if you get that tier one tower up top as the anti mage player, you feel so much safer walking into the enemy jungle and start yeah. farming the jungle as well. Like by keeping up these outer tier one tower, you're limiting anti mage farm in, in kind of 
sub subconscious ways and in other ways? Does that make any sense? It never makes sense when I speak English, so no, I'll answer my own question. But yeah, if you defend your tier ones, it, it's really hard for anti mage to find farm. Yeah, he's he's not doing a whole lot here. He has got 1100 gold, but he's Mid -lane still 1400. X torn. That's gonna force immediate no. TP coming out. Yeah, they're not actually looking to go on KOA X but they do draw TPs from Orange. I guess Orange can look to transition to a bit of a push here down the mid lane, but. That could give space to Antimage top. Antimage, no, he's going bottom. So either way, Antimage needs to be looking to split push bottom or top and pressure the tower. Because every time he reaches the tower, he forces TPs out. He buys his team more time. And if they don't TP, he gets a tower, which means his Battle Fury. Great point. Like, he's not actually even slowing down for the jungle farm. He knows that yeah. when he gets to the tower, he's actually delivering a Brassword, which he doesn't have a slot for. Maybe is he going to drop, drop the south? south probably. Yeah. yeah, he needs all the damage he can get, because he needs to be pressuring towers as fast as possible, which is push out lane. Don't just sit back, wait for last hit. You've got to just sort of do the auto attack last hit. Well, tier 2 is going to be dropping low. Glyph is available. They will not be using that one. Longdrew picks up yet another tower. TP Boat goes back to the mid lane. We might have a fight here. Super gets Shackle up next to the creeps. These Shackle shots are winning them the early game engagement. They'll get a kill against Super. And this is very reminiscent of game number they one. Can they TP bottom though? They just use a lot of TPs. Either way, they pick off Kanka. And even if they lose this tier 1 tower, they're going to get a tier 2. Yeah. And they do TP the tier 1. All you need is really just one, one person. Yep, and Mushi is going to be more than enough to defend that one. Tier 2 though, in the mid lane, how are you going to defend this? This Lone Grip Barrier is just so big at this point. He's going to have his Maelstrom almost finished as well. My god. 40% demolish, a little bit too strong. Radiant yeah, it's, it's a scary looking hero. We've seen Lone Druid picked up in almost every single game of the competition except when it's banned out. And we may be seeing some Lone Druid banned, especially later on when Alliance are playing in the Grand Finals. We're going to see Orange getting ready. The Hawk's going to be going back, scouting the, the kind of a foray into their own jungle. I think Orange is going to just pile 5 4 here on the tower, get it, and now they begin this long siege. Yeah. Now, the, the more Once again, Antimage going top, but yep. every time Orange have an answer for it. You gotta be somewhat careful if you're orange though. You cannot play the same star of Dota that you did against DK in game number one. It's a very, very similar situation. The reason you can't play star of Dota is because they have anti-mage. Anti-mage is so easy for them to escape your snare and then just start split pushing with that battle fury, which by the way, should have it after this creep wave. And even if he's not split pushing, he can be farming neutrals while his team defenders four, and if orange is sticking his five trying to siege and not succeeding in doing so, they're, it's, they're not falling behind, but it's not really a good game plan strategy. But we're gonna see orange, they are sieging and they're sieging now. They don't wanna even wait for anti to get anywhere near that battle fury. They don't have glyph anymore, now the stuns are driving them back, the tower's gonna go down, anti mage is gonna get himself a tier one, but at what cost? Cause the tier three is being threatened to drop down. At some point you just have to X Torn roar everything on KYXY. I'm not sure if that's enough. They throw a purge on top as well. Laguna as a result. Anti Mage gets shackled up. He's gonna get defensively just from Mushi in the middle of everything. The tower is low. Somebody, for the love of God, stick that bear on the nose. He wants super. He gets super. Wow. Super is dead. Burning's gonna eat a stun to the face. Kill the bear. Lone Druid's actually really. No, he's keeping home. He's healing up. If they killed that bear a bit earlier, Lone Druid would have died at the founder. He, he was on 100 HP, but they didn't kill the bear in time. The Raxes are still standing though. Well, Raxus have actually that was a pretty good defense. I, all things considered, they have they only lost super. No they buybacks or anything like that. Yeah, they they force back Lena back, which by the way, Xting has more farm in this game than every other G1 League Land final game combined because <laughs> he's got Blink Arcane. I think this might be a beginning of a hole because Burning now will push out the mid lane hard. Yeah. And as soon as soon as the push is going to be coming the way, he's going to be just pushing up top. Look look at the creep limit of every single lane. Yes. I, I think DK... I think, he, I think he's going to want to go bottom, because look at that big amount of farm bottom. They, there's no one else who needs farm. Sure, you, Kanka can get it. Well, he's got 700 gold. Maybe he is going to take the farm bottom, but I think at this point, you want to rush the anti-mage man to sell as much as possible. Is it going to be the man to sell? Does he need something earlier, like a Vlad, just to help his team? No, I, not a Vlad. I, I, I don't think Vlad does enough in these fights. But I, I think you need the Manta style. Then it's a question of whether you go something like a BKB or you go for a Heart of Tarras. I mean, last game. Burning we, loves his heart, though. Last game, we saw Mushi win Yasha first and force back into the BKB yeah. just because they needed an item. So, and this is a fairly oppressive push coming their way. Glyph is not up. And, uh, well, all the spells are back on. And this DK still on the bot lane. He's got that teleport scroll up to another 1300 gold. They got a fight. He's going to TP back in. Focusing on the bear. Bear is going to be going straight to your racks. They force them back, but anti mage is forced to TP back as well, so yeah. already a small victory. Absolutely, and I mean, ne ne every time this bear comes in, it's doing a bit more damage. The hyperstone pickup mean meaning it hitting a lot faster, doing a lot more damage fa faster. And orange, well, they're just going to keep on sieging. 
Yep. Slowly working on it, burning up the front line. He's getting Shackle, does the defensive. He's coming in. Mushi, by the way, he does still have the Aegis, and now BKB, they're forcing him back. Were a severe on the racks, they really should not be chasing heroes, should yeah. be forcing the heroes back. But they're yeah, wasting right. a lot of value. Super though, it's dropping low. He's gonna be going back and forth. They will finally break the melee racks. There's a mech being picked up. MMY's dead. Shackle shot now. Again, onto two hero. Burning's gonna get burst down. No defensive disruption. He will buy back, but I don't think that will really win them the game. ROTK also died. Kunta's also buying back. Here comes Impel. QQ is gonna get bursted down by the Windrunner. Are they gonna get any return kills? I Doesn't really don't think like it. Yeah. Mushi still has BKB. He respawned. He saved his agents. They get Raxes in. Well, Lone Druid's still alive. Every time they go on this Lone Druid, which I'm okay with because he doesn't have the Aegis, you can't go on Mushi. And then the the two, the Windrunner, the, support, the, the range support, the Windrunner, Lina, they're sitting back. The Nyx Assassin, he's got Carapress, he's hard to go on. It's just Orange with a perfect seat, great positioning from the heroes. They get the mid racks. You know, I think Windrunner is single handedly winning the game for Orange right now. Sure, it's it's the bear that's mauling the towers. Mushi's dro dropping great call downs, but these shackle shots, yeah. these two-man shackle shots every single time, it just forces DK to run around as they're getting beat up upon. Like, yeah. it is so hard for DK to win. They're so far behind already that you cannot deal with two of your two of your five heroes out of the team fight for 3.75 seconds. No, I definitely agree. And Burning, he just can't push out these lanes fast enough with his with his current items. Just the Battle Fury up, he's 24 Radiant's minutes in. Buyback use in that fight, so things just going to get worse and worse for DK. That only... They, they, they lost two Raxes. That, that was with all the buybacks. Things are only going to get harder and worse for them going on as the next pushes and fights are coming. Orange, if they want to play it safe, they wait for Roshan. It's about three minutes from now, so I'm, I, if anything, they look to starve DK for the three minutes. You mentioned how they can't really starve, probably against an anti-mage, but I think they can starve well enough that just to wait for Roshan. Well, if they get a pick off here against Burning, they yeah. may just straight up win the game. We'll oh, yeah. see. Uh, they don't need to wait for the Roshan because he has no buyback. Shackle shot. It's not going to latch it. Throwing all the nukes on him. Burning. Blinking north. There's a rocket on top. He's right. going to straight TP out. Great decision making by Burning. Unfortunately, no split push coming out from him now, so he is... They're gonna get pushed up top. I don't think they even need Roche. Yeah. That was a really cool attempted game by Orange. Windrunner was using Windrunner to go in and then forced up, up, up ground just to try and surprise Burning, because if you just run in normally around the river, Burning sees you before the Shackle Shot's even cast. But right. he got the Shackle Shot off, it didn't land. But either way, they're putting more pressure on. They're going to go straight straight to this top lane, even without an agency. They're feeling confident. And I think it's because of the, their huge item lead. They haven't even got an assault crash, but they've got a BKB on Gyrocopter. They've got the Blink on Lina. They've just got all these fantastic items, and DK have nothing. Yeah, this is where you wish, man, QQQ, if, or not, sorry, MMY, if he maxes Lightning, that would have been so useful. They're going to focus on net, though. I'm not too sure. Nice, force that backward. The bolts missed. The callouts also use as well. Anyway, XY caught out of position, though. He's going to be brought down. It looks like Mana Boy gets used, but he's mecked up once again. The second fight in the row. This mech is making such a big difference. And Muji with the BKB on the foreground. He's doing a decent amount of damage. Orange are forced back. They're also healthy enough that they can fight DK if DK look to chase. And I think Orange here... They just regroup, heal themselves up a bit, use these bottle charges, magic wands, and maybe they look to start sieging once again. If not, they can go back, fall back for Roshan, but I think they're confident enough to just take another push here. Well, if they land a Shackle Shot, they win a team fight. They gotta yeah. be very careful. Roar, as well as Bolt, has a very low cooldown, and they will be coming off cooldown the next Radiant wave. They're gonna be forced to glip right now. The mid is also pressuring in slowly, so... Dire has time, but I'm not too sure whether you make this push, because all the ultimates on is, is back on, on DK home. side. They're TPing home. Great yeah. choice. Just go for the Aegis. They know it's the back Roshan soon. time. It's yep. Maybe you can get a tier 3 tower, maybe you win the fight now, but there's no, there's, you're not risking anything by waiting a minute to push. The only, the only danger is Mushi has maybe a Yasha up or something, maybe the Vlads you talked about, but at this point, there's no real scary items coming out of DK anytime soon in the next minute. Decision time. If you're burning, you're hitting up to your 2,000 gold, do you go Ultimate Orb, Yasha, Vlads, or Buyback? I, not buyback. You can't. You can't be relying long term. You're, if you're using buybacks to hold and defend, you're losing. You're down the racks already. You need items to go late game. The only way DK win this is sort of a 50, 60 minute game with a six slot antimate. So if you're using buyback to hold, not happening. So I would say ultimate orb, just to play a little bit safe, still get an item too. Yeah. <laughs> I think you go with the full big. Go big or go home. You go to Yasha, help yeah. you split push a little bit better, help you farm a little bit yeah. better. I think, uh, yeah, either of those two is definitely fine. Buyback is definitely not the answer. That's a losing recipe. Well, we're going to see perhaps uh, the Dyer trying to get a pick off. I mean, if Anti Mage could play this game right now for like two more minutes, one or two more minutes, they might actually extend this game by a ton. Yeah. Well, there's your Aegis. Once again, goes on to Mushi's Gyrocop. The problem is, even if we're looking at Anti Mage picking up a Manta style, What's he up against? Side the vice on Windrunner? 
Gyrocopter, who's going to be having an MKB soon. Lone Druid with an Assault Caress. This is three carries against one. And the one is... Let's take a look at the net worth. The one is less net worth than all three of those carries. Yep. This is... I don't know. This is grim. Yeah, the, the go graph is just... Re redonkulous at this moment right now. Burning... I, li I like the play by the support. QQ, you can see he's actually next to Burning. He's basically going to be the sacrificial Are they lamb. For a and he's going to... Are yeah. they gonna backdoor this? What's going Orange on? spot this as an observer ward. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is not gonna work. Ohio just needs to play safe. He's got win run for one thing. Purge no, no, no. Slow Q -Q -Q but... there is to just in case I have burning gets like shackle or yeah. initiate on, he's gonna disrupt and okay. sacrifice his life to make sure that burning survives. Yeah. Well, Orange, it's it's the siege coming towards this top lane. Yep. Burning. Lestrick still level. Lestrick, this edict build has been zero impact. At this point, you're you're better off having lightning storm. Yeah, and that's kind of point I made earlier on, they really yeah. wish they had Lightning Storm. Burning, trying to defend out in the middle lane. He also does not have a Teleport Scroll, so he's been very good at keeping the TP up. Looks like he might be not making a, a trek far from home anytime soon. Alright, guaranteed tier 3 cow, no glyph up and nice, nice. deny. Yeah. How much is it actually going to matter? At this point, we're going to see these racks under siege here, and even if a fight breaks out, they can just focus the racks into the Spirit Bear while it's going. First Shackle doesn't latch, so Orange is going to have to wait a while for another one. Bear. bear just completely destroys the racks. As DK going to be playing from behind. Four racks in just a second, and this is not looking good at all for the disruption here. Uh, DK, I don't know if this team fight's going to work out from there. Going KOX, but he's the one who doesn't have H, but Mushi BKB does get rolled immediately. Can they bring down KOX? Sure as hell doesn't look like it. Not when he's getting mixed up. DK burning, blinks his way out of there, just gets away. MMY though, as well as Super, taking too much damage. Mushi gets one. Can he get the other? It's KYXY on a godlike streak with a double kill. It looks like Orange are going to knock out DK from the G1 League Land Finals. They're rotating bottom. They can't actually go because there's a tier 2 tower, but it doesn't matter. GG is called by DK. DK get fourth place here in Shanghai. Orange advance to meet LGD in the second third place decider. Blitz Wagon. When he makes prediction, he is correct. That's all I got to say. Wow. We have to see what he thinks on the upcoming matches. DK in the end, it's... I mean, they they never look all that convincing even in the group stages. They had one or two okay performances. To me, one of their best performances was against Alliance, which yep. was ironically a game they lost. Mm -hmm. They went two and three in the group stage, as did Orange, but their best game maybe against Alliance, which is where they, that level one Roshan strat happened. They played that game so well, they ended up losing anyways. But here they are in the playoffs, up against the team Orange, who they're always there. They're always getting some results. Is this going to be their tournament? Can they make it to the grand finals? We'll have that match coming out soon, but as far as this match is concerned, Orange. It's, it's all about them. It's all about the Mushi team. I generally don't like to pin it on supports when, when somebody loses the game, but MMY just missed so many yeah. splurfs. If you get those ganks on the mid lane, for example, you kill Mushi once or twice, he's weaker. You get a couple of kills on the bot lane, the supports are weaker. They cannot snowball nearly as hard. There's like yeah. four missed splurf, which is fine, but at this level of play, I'm not, I don't know. Yeah, man. Orange were ahead and just kept on snowballing on control. I think if the support play was a bit better, at DK at least playing on equal footings. Either way, the anti mage farm was getting shut down. Yep. But it was the support play, which was a bit of a letdown for DK. We'll see what the analysts think. We're going to take it back to LD and Blitz on the table. Welcome back to the Blitz wagon, guys. We just watched Orange get the monkey off their back. They've had trouble at the big LAN events actually taking down the Chinese teams. Gods did mention they've beaten these top teams in the past, but that's pretty much been exclusively at online events. To do it on LAN has always been the big hurdle for Orange. Last G1 League, they took down IG, but that was in the third, fourth place decider match after they had already gotten destroyed by DK 2-0 in their semifinals match. So this time around, Orange, they get the revenge. They take down DK. Blitz, let's talk a bit more about this matchup. Did you feel it was the supports? Do you agree with Gods and Lumi there? Or do you think the draft had something to do with it as well? I mean, the draft looked okay, and the rotation looked a little bit better from DK. When they, when they rotated both supports to mid, there were two different occasions where they should have gotten a kill immediately. Right. But because of the missed split earth, I mean, it's little things like that, you know, when teams are so evenly matched, that'll make the difference. And... Failing a kill like that twice, getting nothing out of it. That that first gank, it felt like it was just generally a confusing coordination because that hero that got disrupted was already axed and about to come back. Got disrupted when maybe the disrupt wasn't necessary. Then the split earth also misses. So it seemed like in general, not just to pin it on the Lashrak play, although that was probably the easiest thing to blame. I feel like in general, the coordination just wasn't there. And that's been your criticism your main sort of critique of DK is the support play in the early game, their ganking is just not up to snuff with the rest of their play. Yeah, and then uh, putting the Beastmaster up at top against the Lone Druid, that's a nightmare mana matchup for... Uh, it's RFK. an auto loss. Yeah, you can't exactly. win that lane. So that means your short lane has to be getting something out. But this time, Orange, you know, we criticize their uh, 
their Windrunner Trilane setup, but this time they went straight back to it. They said, okay, we can make this work, and this time a lot of Burning's Farm was denied, and the Windrunner actually kind of paid off. Getting that quick mech this time instead of the four staff made the team fight so much easier. So much better. It offers you so much more, and I think the other thing was, let's be honest, DK, this time around, they didn't have an Undying in the Trilane. That was not as strong of a Trilane. When you put Anti-Mage there, he can't really offer you a whole lot, even compared to someone like Alchemist, who at least has a stun to his name. So... I feel like DK, it was a bit of a weaker trilane, and this is kind of the old school way the teams were dealing with anti-mage trilanes. You put Windrunner in an aggressive trilane, you have two or even three ranged heroes, lots of stuns, and you just slowly but surely chip away at him. They didn't give up any freebie kills, they didn't overextend. They had a, I feel they just had better lanes that game as well. Lone Druid versus Beastmaster, that's an auto win. Mid lane, pretty even matchup, Kunkka versus Gyro. So what DK really needed to do was just nail all those ganks, and they didn't really hit any. Yeah, I think they actually lost um, all three lanes. Maybe I agree. It wasn't uh, complete stumps, but I mean, top was, mid was in slight favor of Mushi, and then at bottom, Burning didn't really get anything out of it. So when you lose three lanes like that, and what you need to do to get yourself out of a position like that is to gank, but when your ganks fail as well, and you're not getting anything, I mean, props what do you to do? Mushi for playing that really well too. Every time the Disrupt Torrent came up, he actually just ran forward into the boats every time and survived most of the time. It was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, he, he even when they killed him once in a while, it just took way too much to kill him because it wasn't a one-carry lineup. It wasn't that four-protect one. And I feel like for Orange, that's just a draft that suits them better. Getting a carry for Mushi that can get involved earlier, getting a strong laning hero like the Lone Druid. I mean, to get a Lone Druid at all is going to be tough against LGD. I imagine they'll pick it or ban it themselves most games. But I just think for Orange, this kind of draft, this more aggressive style, that's what they need to do. If they just sit back and farm, if they try to play defensively, they're not going to match up well against LGD, but if they play like they did versus DK, I think they have a shot at least to take one game. So we'll be coming up next with DK versus LGD. We'll dive more, uh, or excuse me, Orange versus LGD. <laughs> we'll dive more into that matchup after this. But for now, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's going to be your semifinals matchup, your second place team versus your third place team, duking it out to see who will advance into that grand finals. 